All right, my friend, 2019 is well underway. How are your resolutions going for you? Have you made any progress towards your goals, whether it's financial or any other for that matter? If money does happen to fall on your list of priorities, which I imagine it does, or you wouldn't be on this channel, you're gonna wanna make sure you pay extra special attention to today's video because today the VIP Financial Education channel is serving up the 10 most action-based items that nearly anybody can benefit from. All right, welcome back to the VIP Financial Education Channel. My name is Matthew, I'm your cash flow coach, and I help you go further, faster, financially. And because of how many options we all have when it comes to best managing our finances and money, I wanted to distill them all down to just the essential 10 so that you have all of your bases covered. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into step one, which is to consolidate your charitable giving. Now, what I mean by this, is to bunch multiple years worth of charitable donations into just one year, say 2019, and then use the new standard deduction for the years when you're not itemizing in order to save even more taxes. The second recommendation is to contribute to an individual retirement account, otherwise known as an IRA, if you haven't been already. Now, because you have until April 15th of this year, 2019, to do this, you can technically make contributions today that affect how you file for the year 2018, which just ended. Now, try to get as close to the $5,500 limit that you can, 6,500 if you are 50 years of age or older. The third step and fourth are actually both for those that are actually either coming upon retirement age soon or are already there. Now, if this includes you, be sure to take your first RMD or required minimum distribution from your 401k or traditional IRA and not doing this by the April 1st deadline could actually make you liable for penalties. Once you've turned 70 and a half, years of age, you're actually required to take subsequent annual distributions from your retirement accounts by December 31st of each year. Now, the IRS is serious about enforcing this requirement, so much so that they can actually penalize you for not taking a distribution by as much as 50% of the minimum amount that you're required to take. So it is hefty, make sure you follow that. The fifth step here is for financial well-being in 2019. You've gotta make sure you create or update your living will. And I know this just isn't a subject that many of us like to talk about where our money goes after we pass. It has a huge impact, however, for those people that we love around us. At the end of the day, as uncomfortable as it might be, you're gonna to wanna to take the time to go over your will and update it with your current assets and where you'd like them to be distributed upon your passing. Doing this will make sure that your heirs don't have to go through the probate court in order to sort through the wealth that you leave behind. And not only is this convenient for them, it's for convenient purpose, for convenience purposes, it will inevitably save on court costs and legal fees for those you love. So there are substantial financial benefits to it beyond just convenience. The sixth step here relates to step five in that you really do need to make sure that your end of life documents are all current. And this can include power of attorney, this can include your living will documents, it can include your preference in terms of burial or cremation. You really want to make sure you, I mean, literally you might be wondering what this step has to do with financial success here in, in 2019. And I get that, but it's financially important because failing to do this can be extremely costly. And the assets that you've managed to accumulate throughout your life might be mismanaged if something unexpected and costly were to happen to you. So think of, st of step six as being a kind of free insurance that you can take out on your own money. The seventh step in this process is to review the performance of your financial plan from 2018. And if you didn't have a financial plan, like many don't, for last year, of course that's okay. Don't spend a lot of time looking in the rearview mirror. It just means that you simply need to put one into place for this coming year. If you did have a plan for last year, how did it end up? Did you accomplish what you were hoping to, what you set out to accomplish? Where did your most successful investments come from? How should you change your plan and strategy going into 2019. The more income producing assets you are able to acquire, the more important it will become to conduct a full scope annual review of their performance every year. And if you need help with this, don't worry, just make sure you grab yourself one of the free coaching sessions from the VIP calendar, which is freecoachingcalendar.com. I'll throw the link in the description to make it easy on you. And we'll work together to make sure that your financial path is clear. Step number eight is to make sure you get 
your 401k contributions in alignment with your anticipated retirement date. And if you don't know how to do this, there are plenty of online retirement calculators that are gonna help you with it. And the idea is to have a clear understanding of exactly how much money you're gonna to need to be contributing to your retirement accounts every year in order to fund the life you'd like to live once you reach retirement age. As the quality of life changes over time, it is worth revisiting your 401k contributions just to see if more or less makes sense considering your current financial situation. Obviously, these are all tax perks. This is a tax-based strategy where you can defer taxes in order to keep more of what you're earning. That's why retirement accounts are valuable to you. You may also wanna be looking into the insurance or investment grade insurance contract that we talk about with Nick Fortune as a, a terrific alternative to these retirement accounts as well. Step number nine is to conduct what I like to call an honest expense audit. And this is a long, hard look at exactly where your money is going each and every month. Are your expenses in line with your financial goals for 2019? Or are there places where money is currently leaking out? And you might be able to reduce that leak or even eliminate it altogether. Leave nothing off the table here and really bring a magnifying glass down onto exactly how much is going out the door each and every month and why that amount is necessary to spend. Think about alternatives to some of your expenses. Reevaluate what your options are. You might be surprised to learn where you could be saving money in certain areas, which is why we provide you access to the free resource Cashflow Cruncher, which you can get at cashflowcruncher.com. It is a dynamic spreadsheet. It is the most comprehensive I've seen for personal management of cash flow, whereby your intention and long-term goals are to make a lot of money and pay off your debts very, very quickly. So download your copy of that spreadsheet and begin using it religiously. Every single line item should be itemized inside the personal or business expenses of that spreadsheet. In order to help with this, you may consider downloading mint.com. Mint.com, setting up a, a free account there may help with more of the interface between your banks and transaction history, and it'll provide live update updates to your spending. So this will help you keep better tabs on where each and every dollar is going so that you can properly categorize those in order to start determining where you can pull back. This is not about lifestyle restriction. I want you to preserve the ideal lifestyle for you while still getting the same things for less. Now, last step here, number 10, is to finally really get serious about reducing, if not eliminating, all of your debts. Not all debt is considered the same. There are people that argue there is such a thing as good debt and bad. For those of you that have been following this channel for some time, by now you should know that I look at all debt as bad. It's all evil. Now, leverage, which is often considered the same thing, depending on how it's used, is for me defined as one of the key ingredients to wealth creation. So I believe in borrowing money, but what I don't believe in is the debt that subsequently comes with it. I wanna try and create that in a short-term game plan so that it's paid in full as quickly as possible. And some of the weapons that we use on this channel are other forms of better types of debt. So it's not about good debt, bad debt, it's about better debt and worse debt, but all debt is bad. Make sure you understand that it's absolutely toxic to take debt and add it to the bottom line and use that for any type of consumer related spending. You never borrow for anything other than an asset. I don't borrow for anything other than an income producing asset, at which time I can stack the cash flow and like I said, rapidly accelerate the elimination of those balances. If you haven't yet done so, make sure you check all the videos on this channel. You'll see us doing that down to the penny. You'll see how I paid off a mortgage in under six years by just simply attacking it within the past six months. It was easily able to be paid off within about a four month period of time and it was almost $200,000. So extreme circumstances of this working. Now there you have it, my friends. Those are my personal top 10 must do steps for financial success throughout 2019 and beyond. Was there one or two on this list that you would have perhaps removed or replaced with another? And what would those other, uh, if you were to even add to it, what would you add? I'm very curious, go ahead and drop a comment below to make sure that you stay eligible for our contests. We will be giving away two $25 Amazon gift cards each and every week moving through the year. In order to stay eligible, you're gonna wanna make sure you're subscribed, that you drop a like on the video, and of course, interact through comments. All right, guys. You know it's my favorite time, giving away that $25 moolah. This is the same as cash in your pocket. Well, same as cash on Amazon anyway. So guys, today's winners, and keep in mind, it's the first one that responds to this video that will actually claim the prize of the three that we've selected. Today, we select Jennifer Kinser, Jim McDuff, and Moto Dave. All right, guys, Jennifer Kinser, Jim McDuff, and Moto Dave are the three winners. 
And I just can't tell you how much I love this. Okay, we did this for the first time last week and we had you guys race to come and pick this stuff up. And here we got Lisa Neville who actually claimed the prize first saying, oh my God, I can't believe I was picked. Uh, I don't know, countless exclamation points. I'm freaking out. I've never won anything before. I love that when it's the first time winner there. Hopefully I'm writing you soon enough. I did look out seeing the notification of the new YouTube video, so you never know. That's the key, guys. You gotta have those post notifications on. Either way, I'm so thankful for your wonderful channel. Thank you for sharing your knowledge on there. It's been such a blessing to me. Smiley face. Cheers. So Lisa, you're welcome. And thank you for being an ongoing viewer. Guys, get on there, claim that prize. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next video to help you go further, faster financially. Until we see you then, make it a great day today and take care.